Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And um, I'll just start with a couple of announcements reminding you about our depression and anxiety support groups for adults and adolescents, uh, reminding you about upcoming classes in food allergies, um, the research boot camp, which is next week, and also HIV AIDS boot camp. Uh, Friday and Saturday, March 5th and 6th, all by teleconference. So no matter where you are in the world, you can participate in this. And we always tape everything so that if your time zone isn't real compatible with our time zone here, um, you can uh, you can listen to the recording. And of course, I film these things after um, and make them part of our uh, online course uh, library. Um, lots of things coming up here. Uh, career training is always something you can start anytime. Um, some of it's online, most of it's live and interactive, but there's always something starting here at Wellness Forum Health and at the Wellness Forum Institute for Health Studies. So if you're interested in this stuff, then give me, um, just send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. So, um, you know, one of the things that um, uh, that we have been subjected to is quarantine, uh, quarantine at home, uh, quarantining people in various circumstances, uh, quarantining people in hospitals who test positive. And so uh, the effect of quarantine on transmission of SARS-CoV-2. And this particular article was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it was about the effects of quarantine on the transmission of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, in a military setting. And the military is a wonderful place to study this because military recruits, um, generally you get a lot of uniformity and um, very high compliance rate for whatever it is that you're going to um, enforce. So I'm just going to read this to you, excerpts of this study. Again, it's in the New England Journal of Medicine, um, because I think it goes to the place of, in spite of, you won't believe the extent to which this happened, um, and uh, the, the, the uh, quarantine uh, was enforced, and all the rules were followed, and that sort of thing. So the end of the story, I think, will surprise you just a little bit. So um, basically um, what happened was um, uh, recruits, potential recruits were instructed to quarantine at home for two weeks before they traveled to a campus um, where they were subjected to a 14 day quarantine on campus that was supervised. So there's quarantine at home for 14 days and then they arrived at a campus where they quarantined for 14 days before going to Paris Island. Um, they presented after the home quarantine, they presented to a local military entrance processing station where a medical history was taken and a physical examination was performed. So anyway, during, so what happened, then they get sent to this college campus. And during that period of time, they all wore double layered cloth masks at all times, indoors and outdoors, except when sleeping or eating, practice social distancing of at least six feet, were not allowed to leave the campus, did not have any access to personal electronics and other items that might contribute to surface transmission and routinely wash, wash their hands. That's not all. They slept in double occupancy rooms with sinks, ate in shared dining facilities and used shared bathrooms. All recruits cleaned their rooms daily, sanitized bathrooms after each use with bleach wipes and ate pre-plated meals in a dining hall that was cleaned with bleach after each platoon had eaten. Most instruction and exercises were conducted outdoors. All movement of recruits was supervised and unidirectional flow was implemented with design building entry and exit points to minimize contact among persons. All recruits underwent daily temperature and symptom screening. Six instructors who were assigned to each platoon worked in eight hour shifts and enforced the quarantine measures. If recruits reported any signs or symptoms consistent with COVID-19, they were reported to sick call, underwent rapid PCR testing, um, and were placed in isolation pending the results of testing. Instructors also were restricted to campus, were required to wear masks, were provided with pre-plated meals and underwent daily temperature checks and symptom screening. Instructors who were assigned to a platoon in which a positive case was diagnosed underwent rapid PCR testing and if the result was positive, the instructor was removed from duty. Recruits and instructors were prohibited from interacting with campus support staff such as janitorial and food service personnel. After each class completed quarantine, a deep bleach cleaning of surfaces was performed in the bathroom, showers, bedrooms, and hallways in the dormitories, and the dormitory remained unoccupied for at least 72 hours before reoccupancy. 
The researchers identified six independent transmission clusters indicative of local transmission during the supervised quarantine. Most clusters predominantly included members of the same platoon, um, uh, and many infected recruits had, infected, had an infected roommate. The two largest sequence defined clusters occurred in the same class of recruits. Each cluster occurred within a platoon, and with the exception of one recruit who was roomed with an infected recruit from another platoon and was infected with a strain that belonged to the same cluster as that found in other members of that platoon. Although many infected uh, recruits in both clusters had nearby room assignments and shared a bathroom, the epidemiological analysis suggested that platoon membership and double occupancy rooming were risk factors for infection, but room proximity and shared bathrooms were not. One instructor only during the entire period of time tested positive using PCR testing, indicating that instructors were an unlikely source of infection. Although campus service workers cannot be excluded as sources for virus introduction, they were separated from the recruits and instructors. Overall, the recruits themselves were the most likely source of introduction and transmission of the cluster strains. So, Here's what I, um, uh, and, and just to finish it, multiple independent virus strain transmission clusters were identified, shared rooms and shared platoon membership were risk factors for transmission. Um, most study participants with positive tests were asymptomatic. All cases among participants and non-participants were identified as the result of scheduled testing rather than clinical testing performed as a result of daily screening. So what does this all mean? Why did I wanna read all of that to you? Well, the reason is that, the, the, think about what happened here. These people were quarantined at home, then they were quarantined in this college campus with all of these restrictions. We're gonna wash our hands, we're gonna sanitize and wash everything down with bleach. When one group moves out, we sanitize everything, leave it for 72 hours before somebody else moves in. Nobody has any contact with anybody. And you still ended up with cases. There were still cases. So the insanity of thinking that you're somehow gonna control the spread of a virus. It is insanity. And it's hard to imagine that people with medical training with a straight face think that this is going to help this type of nonsense. And what I thought of when I read this study was I thought back to when Andrew Cuomo was on doing his daily uh, press conference in New York. And he actually said, and had a chart, that said 66% of hospitalized patients in New York at that time were people who had been sheltering at home, had not used public transportation and had no contact with anybody outside of the people living in their home. Which means that if you translate, what's the English translation of that? This has all been for naught. It had absolutely no chance of working ever. It's not working, it can't work. And it never worked even in a situation as controlled as this. So um, again, every day, more evidence of the same thing that I've been talking about for now, almost a year. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, people. And it has to stop. That's my life's mission right now, making sure that it stops. All right, that's it for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy learning more about this side of the COVID issue. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.